friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and right now I'm about to unbox all of my perennial liner plugs that I got for sale here at the nursery. Doesn't mean I'm not gonna snag a plug or two to grow at home, but these are meant for nursery sales. Now some of them are proven winners, some of them are not, which means some of them will be required to grow in the proven winter pots and some of them are not. And then for the rest of them, I have black trade gallon pots, which aren't a true gallon. They're trade gallons. They're smaller, but they still have a hefty amount of soil for these perennial liners. Okay. So in no particular order, I am going to be opening these up. So these were grown at Walter's Gardens. I ordered them through Ball Color Link. That is my rep. They are one of the reps for Walter's Gardens. So let's open up these boxes and see what we have. I'm so excited. Oh, they look so good already. Okay, so the first plant that I'm unboxing, Grand Cascade Butterfly Bush, and these are a bit of a bigger plug. Let me get one out. Ooh, these are packed like tight right in here. Okay, so it is one tray, but look, there's, I think there's 50 of them. Oh my gosh, these are gonna be so, good you guys look at the size of this plug like that's what I'm starting out with that's a beautiful butterfly bush okay I'm gonna open up this next box see what we have here Ooh, wow okay so this is a perennial anemone and oh my goodness there are buds there is a bud on this anemone same size really nice looking plants oh my goodness, the bud's right here. You can see it right here. Now, I am gonna be putting these, look at this. Look at the size of that. These are gonna be fantastic in a few weeks time. Oh my goodness, I wasn't gonna open till May 1st, but if these perennials are ready to put in the ground in April, I might open up some for some perennial sales. Uh, but this is a perennial anemone. It's not the cut flower anemone that I grow in the hoop house. So it's a little bit different, but it's beautiful nonetheless. Okay, I'm not putting these back in the boxes. I'm just gonna set them out because they need to breathe. Oh, here's my packing slip. Got it. My driver, um, I just got these off the side of the road because he can't pull up my driveway, obviously, and these were delivered FedEx Freight. But my driver said that his wife watches my videos, so hi, FedEx driver's wife. <laughs> you do YouTube videos, do you? Yeah. Here we have here. Oh my goodness, guys. These look so healthy. Okay, so this is a hollyhock, Black Knight hollyhock. Let me grab a good one here. Just grab this one on the corner. Um, that's beautiful. Look at the root ball on that. That is a beautiful looking plant. I'm so excited. These are gonna be huge. They're gonna be huge when they're ready for sale. Breaking down my cardboard. Okay. Ooh, hello. I know who this is. This is Baptisia. Baptisia, I didn't have any of for nursery sales last year and I had a lot of people asking me for them. So this variety is actually called Australis, which I think is just the regular purple Baptisia. If it's not, I'll put the picture up of it because I'm having a hard time remembering what I ordered. I ordered so long ago. Okay. Okay, so this is stuff that I'm really excited about. I posted a picture of these on my Facebook page the other day for my customers to let them know that I was getting them in, and there was a lot of excitement about this. This is one of three varieties of creeping phlox, and this one happens to be one called red wing. Creeping phlox is a beautiful mounding phlox. It's lower to the ground, doesn't really grow much higher than six inches off the ground, and it is a carpet of color for several weeks in mid to late spring, depending on your area. And this one is called Red Wing. I have three different colors. I was inspired by this because there's actually a house around the corner that has a couple different colors of this growing every spring. And several customers last year asked me for, you know that colorful mound of carpet in the ground? Do you have any of those? And I had to do a little bit of thinking and I was like, oh, the creeping phlox. So now this year, I will have plenty of them. Plenty, I have 72 of three different colors. Okay. Another bright and beautiful perennial, they're all perennials, 
this is an aster, but it's different than the aster that I've grown before for pot flowers. This, wow. This is called Grape Aster Crush. And these plants are amazing, amazing plants. I have a lot of these and I'll be potting these up beautifully. Such a great, great pop of purple perennial. It's a pop of perennial purple. Ah! Okay, I have two more boxes, three more boxes of non-proven winners and then I'll open the proven winners. Now this is the pink variety of Creeping Phlox and it just looks very similar to the red because obviously there's no, um, there's no color yet. But from what I'm told, these mound up very quickly and by the time I'm open for sales in the spring, they should be kind of rolling over the top of the pot. The variety is called Bedazzled Pink. Woo! Okay, this is the other, the third and final variety of creeping flocks that I have. And this one's a lavender color. It's called Bedazzled Lavender. That's the beauty of this business. Whatever doesn't sell, you can just plant in your house. That's a problem. For me, it's a problem because I want to plant all of the things. And I might be doing some trading too with um, some other growers. I've got some friends, like I don't know if I need 72 of each color, but my friend in uh, like Freedom Farms, Steve and Kim, they have something out. So we might be doing some trading too. So I might not pop all of these up for sale here. This one is called Cherry Pops Monarda, which is like bee bomb and uh, here we go. She has a little growing to do, but there is life in each one of the cells. I actually had another Bernarda come in last week. I'll show it to you, it's over there. So this is what this one looks like. It is Cherry Pops Bernarda. This will grow up just fine. And this one over here, this one over here is called Blue Moon Bernarda, which is a beautiful a lavender color. Cherry Pops obviously is like a magenta. That leaves us with some of the proven winners. And I do have a couple more orders coming in. Uh, probably, I think at the end of March, I have some orders coming in. Oh my goodness. I see, I was not expecting to see color um, because these are perennials and it's just not time yet. This is Dianthus, guys. Oh, wow. Wow, 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 wow. So this is a perennial Dianthus. It's a beautiful pink color. Um, and there are a couple pops of color on there. Let me see, we've got Paint the Town Magenta. A perennial Dianthus. Uh, I had a lot of people inquiring about this as well last year. Running out of room. Who are you? Now this is what I expect to see when it comes to perennials. We've got a whole tray of Hasta with absolutely nothing popping up yet. So I'm gonna be keeping an eye on these hostas and uh, I'm sure, oh see I see there was last year's root. They'll be popping up when they should be because the hosta around here, it's not coming up yet. So I wanna to talk to you guys about where I'm storing these this year. Last year I put these all in the front of greenhouse number two and they started to mature way faster than they should. The heat was on in there. I had uh, bleeding hearts blooming, et cetera, et cetera. This year, my plan is to pot all of these up, put them on the floor in greenhouse number four, and then keep the heat only at about 40 degrees and keep the fans on and stuff so that it is more like a timed perennial for our area. And so they're not ready too soon. I don't want things to be blooming in March and then nothing in May when people come to buy them. So I wanna slow down their progress and treat them like a true perennial. So that is my plan. So I'm gonna turn the heat down in four, but above freezing. And that way they will still be okay because they're, most of them other than that hosta obviously, it's starting to leaf out. So they're a little bit ahead of where they should be, but I wanna kinda keep them slow growing so they're not too fast for my customers. It looks like we've got some bare roots here. And yep, oh, there's life to them too. I can see some green. So this is a salvia, which is a perennial salvia. Let me see if I can get the name, the variety name. 
So this will be a priority for me. It's called Pink Dawn. This will be a priority for me to pot up because the bare roots can get moldy really quick inside the bags. So this will be something I'll be planting right away. And this is a proven winner, so it will be going into one of these pots. Oh my goodness, guys. I have been waiting for this. So I saw this. Um, Spring Meadows had some of this at the Peru Motors trade show that I went to. This is the amazing hookera that they've been talking about. It's called Wildberry. And the color, if you guys can see, it is so very beautifully purple. It is so different than the other hookeras. It just has a little bit more vibrant of a purple. It's beautiful. I'm excited about this. I knew when I saw it, when I saw it at the trade show, I knew I had to add that to my list. Okay, we're down to three boxes. Let's see if we can get this done here. Oh, what is this? This looks like a heliochrysum or something. What do we got here? Oh, it's an Artemisia. It's Silver Star Artemisia. And um, Artemisia is a fantastic perennial. It has that beautiful Dusty Miller color and they're just starting to come to life. So it's called Silver Lining Artemisia. Perfect. You can come in. Get off and show this. Oh, oh wow. Ah, I don't remember what flavor she said it was. It's lavender um, frosting with Earl Grey muffin. Oh yeah. Or cupcake. She said I have so um, two more boxes to go. All right, let me go sit for a minute. Okay. Right. Mom's here um, oh. planting up baskets and filling pots and stuff like that. It's another um, bare root. So I'll have to plant this in the pots right away, like I said. And what are we reviewing with here? I don't know because I can't see a sticker. Oh, there it is. Oh, this is Cat's Meow Nepeta. So this is another, obviously, perennial. I'm only opening up perennials right now. This is another amazing perennial that we've seen featured on many other gardening shows. Okay, so here is the root itself. And um, I'm probably gonna bury the crown and put it in the soil. And it's gonna start to wake up naturally when the weather is right for it to do so. Like I said, these are gonna go in number four with minimal temperatures. Cat's meow. What is that? Nepeta. It's like purple spikes. Oh wow. Okay, this is the last box of this delivery. I have a few more coming at the end of this month, like I said, so we'll have another unboxing then. What do we got here? Woo! I forgot about this. Oh wow. I am so excited about this. This is a sedum but it's not the typical sedum that is tall. This is a creeping sedum perennial. And hold, wait for it. It's called Boogie Woogie. <laughs> it's so cool. It's a variegated creeping sedum. Boogie Woogie 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 Woogie. This is really cool. Yeah, okay. Okay guys, that's it for my perennial unboxing for plants here at the nursery. Good news is that I had dozens and dozens and dozens of perennials that I had left over, like hostas and tall sedums, like uh, autumn, autumn joy sedum and the chocolate sedum, and I had some um, hydrangeas left over, et cetera, et cetera. Some nine barks, they're all waking up. The daylilies that I didn't sell, they're all coming back to life. I've been keeping them watered and keeping them in a cold area in the back of the barn, but they're coming back to life. So I'll have those perennials that I had last year in addition to these new perennials. And then in a few weeks, we've got more exciting plants to come. So anyway, guys, I am gonna move this stuff, get it out of the way, break down all this cardboard, and you'll see me planting all these perennials coming up in a video probably within the next week. So thanks for sticking around, guys. We'll see you soon. Look at all this cardboard. I see that. What am I doing with it? I gotta break it down. Break it down. There's room in the thing, the cardboard that he was doing. Breaking it down. Breaking it down. <laughs>